Hi, well today I've got this Nintendo NES system that's got a case of the Blinkies. If you ever owned a Nintendo, you probably had this problem where sometimes you put the game in and try to turn it on, it'll just sit there and flash instead of playing the game and then you sit here and wiggle and, and maybe you'll blow on the cartridge and it ends up in frustration because it won't play. Now, the one solution to fixing this problem is to replace the 34 pin connector that uh, interfaces between the cartridge and the system. Um, but I'm going to try something different today uh, instead of trying to replace that uh, connector. Because the, the replacement connectors that you can buy today. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure are not going to be very good quality. They're, they're going to be made in China and um, from what I understand and what I've heard they don't, they don't tend to last very long. They, they make a good connection but uh, they're not made the way the original ones are. So if you can keep the original 34 pin connector without having to replace it but yet it'll still work uh, well that might be a, an ideal situation. So p part of the reason that this uh, phenomenon occurs is because there's a copyright um, protection scheme a chip built into the NES and the cartridges and uh, that chip is notorious for being uh, very finicky about the uh, the signal it gets so if there's any problem with the connection between the cartridge and the system it'll trigger that and the chip actually is uh, what's sitting there and resetting the system over and over again so today we're going to uh, do a, a simple mod that will disable the copy protection uh, chip. So hopefully, even though this um, the system maybe has a questionable 34 pin connector, uh, we won't have to replace it. Uh, but this is going to be an experiment to see if that's that's actually the case and uh, just documentation of the actual process to disable that lockout chip. The first step in doing this modification is to disassemble the unit and to do that we're going to take out the the six uh, Phillips head screws that hold the, the case together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. The next step is to take out the seven screws that hold on the, the metal RF shield, which is uh, this piece of metal here. I'm going to go ahead and take this game out. And I'm going to go ahead and take out these seven screws.
Now we need to take out six screws that hold the cartridge uh, carriage in place. Okay, and once those screws are out, we need to slide this kind of forward, and there's a post right here. There's a post right here that's in the way, so it won't slide forward because that post is in the way. So we need to lift it up slightly over that post and then continue to slide it forward and then up and off. With that out of the way, we can now take out the last two screws right th there and there And with those two screws out, we can start to try to lift the motherboard up and out. And to make it easier, I'll go ahead and disconnect the connectors here. And this shield will just lift off. And there is the motherboard. So the lockout chip here is the one that's labeled 3193A. It's at the side of the board with the, the video output and the power in, in, input. Um, there's these two, three capacitors that are right in the way because we need to get to the one, two, three, fourth pin from the left, and we need to cut that pin uh, and lift it. Uh, some say it needs to be grounded, and um, uh, apparently it can be left floating and, and still work just fine. So we're going to want to go ahead and cut that pin and either tie it to ground or leave it floating. But either way, it should... Um, uh, keep that chip from resetting the machine over and over again when it doesn't get the uh, 
a code or whatever it's looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and try to cut this uh, pin with my, my diagonal cutters. And there's, there's not much room and um, these capacitors are definitely in the way. I've bent this one down already a little bit. Uh, these ones don't uh, have a whole lot of wiggle room, but uh, you don't want to knock them over. I'm just going to try to get in here a little bit better. Let's see if I can't cut it free. Okay, and I, I managed to nibble that a couple times with my with my dikes, and um, there wasn't just a thread of of metal that was holding it on. So I was able. I just broke that, and I, I want to just pull this uh, pin away a little bit if I can. It's a bit hard to see. Well, that should be more than adequate. Let's see if I can I can zoom in there. And uh, it's it's a little bit hard to tell, but the it's been it's been cut sheer from here. There's no there's almost no metal sticking out of the side there, and uh, I've got quite a nice gap now just from um, nibbling nibbling at that pen a little bit. I could try to. Uh, desolder it and pull it out, but I think that that will be uh, more than sufficient. Okay, now that that pin is cut, the lockout chip should be uh, disabled and it should work a lot better. While I've got it out, I might as well go ahead and try to give this a, a little bit more thorough cleaning. Uh, so let me try that out. So I've got some contact cleaner here and uh, this is the kind that I've I've been using and I I really really like the stuff I call it magic spray because nine out of ten times I can I can just spray the contacts with it and get these old uh, Game Boys and NES systems that that won't play a um, couple sprays usually put the game in make sure the the game or uh, card edge is clean too um, but generally a couple sprays with this and, and most things start working. I've, I've sprayed this one quite a lot though and it, it really hasn't um, you know made a hundred percent improvement but um, if you don't have if you don't have contact cleaner I highly recommend and you get some if you're working on old game systems it's it really is uh, pretty much magic. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and hit the, uh, the inside here. And some more sprays, and uh, hit my use my game here just to give a little bit of friction. They don't look uh, particularly. Uh, dirty, but they might—they might just be 
um, worn out and fatigued and I guess I could go in there and try to bend them a little bit but let's just see how this um, taking the the lockout chip out of service uh, does okay so all I have left to do now is to put it back together and see if it works so Now that I've got it all back together, let's test it out. Okay, and there's no game in there now, but how about that? No blinking because there's nothing to reset it. Now let's try it with a game. Awesome. Well, I guess I'll have to go hook this up to a TV and see if it's actually uh, on the game and not just on because as it happens, since there's no reset chip, you can actually turn on the Nintendo with no game in it and it, it won't flash. So it'll actually show you a, a brown screen. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this up to uh, my TV and uh, in the other room and see if uh, Ninja Gaiden will go ahead and play. Um, without having to hit reset a bunch of times.